is always uh, get a soil test. Uh, in vegetables, we do it just prior to, uh, ap to bedding, the application of the fertilizer. Uh, in citrus, it's typically uh, done in the summer months so that you can adjust either your current or next year's uh, uh, fertilizer practices. But those are you can find specifics on for your crop, whether it's vegetable, citrus, or what, whatever else you may be, be growing. Uh, there are specifics as far as soil tests and recommendations. We won't go into that as much, but that is really what you need to key your uh, fertilizer program on is the result of those, uh, those fertilizer tests and the recommendations. We don't, uh, in Florida, we don't analyze uh, soil for nitrogen. We always assume uh, that you're gonna have to pull a, put a full amount of nitrogen on, so that's, that's always the easy number to come up with. Potassium is, uh, is somewhat uh, the same. We, uh, we look at how much is in the soil and we can adjust the amount of potassium that we apply, uh, but it's quite often uh, a, a proportion of, of the nitrogen, either the same, slightly less, or slightly more uh, potassium than we, have, than we apply in nitrogen. The phosphorus is the one that you really need to, to look at. We have, uh, we have changed, as far as state recommendations, uh, University of Florida recommendations, we've changed from a soil test with Malik 1 to a soil test with Malik 3. And that may not mean a, much, mean a lot to you, but uh, I'll go over the differences very quickly. Both, uh, both soil tests are double, double acid extractions. The uh, extractant, try, uh, the attempt of, of, of any of the extractants, but particularly these, are to mimic the acids that are excreted by, by roots uh, that, that make the nutrients within the so, uh, soil more soluble and, ha and make those nutrients available uh, for uptake by the plant. What we have found, and we've known this for some time with Malik 1, is that as the soil pH approaches and exceeds uh, pH of 7, so if you have a neutral soil or slightly, slightly alkalized soil, with, with uh, Malik 1, you're actually, you're actually uh, neutralizing the acid. So you're not doing much better than just extracting it with water. Malik 3, on the other hand, has some buffers in there so that the alkalinity of the soil doesn't affect the extractant as much. It still has the, the acidity there to extract the nutrients from the soil. So that's why we've basically why we've made the change from Malik 1 to Malik 3. The numbers for phosphorus as far as uh, an index, and I'll, uh, we'll talk about index, index in just a moment, but the index numbers have changed slightly, and all of our recommendations from here on will be based on index numbers for Malik 3 rather than Malik 1. Now the index, previously we had talked about soil, different soil categories based on the amount of phosphorus, yeah, phosphorus in the soil, as either being very low, low, medium, high, or very high. And in that, in that range of index, we had a, a, an amount of phosphorus that should be applied for each of those categories up to, up to high. And anything high and above, you applied no phosphorus at all. What we've done is we've combined some of the categories and now we just have a low, a medium, and a high. But the, but the, uh, but the uh, recommendation still is the same. If you have a, a, a range of phosphorus that's in a high, high range, high index, you don't apply phosphorus. Below that, you apply smaller amounts uh, of phosphorus depending on your, uh, on your soil test between a low and medium.